Hey, I'm Brie and welcome to the second episode of my exciting European summer series where I'll be taking you on a five week adventure through Europe. In this video, we spend one day in London. Join us as we make the most of our limited time by visiting iconic landmarks, learning of the rich history and culture. For those planning a trip to London, I hope this video offers ideas and inspiration to enhance your visit. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. We're in London. We arrived here last night, go watch my other video if you want to go watch our travels. But we're literally here for one full day and then tomorrow we're leaving to go to Iceland. So I thought I'll vlog today and show you what we'd get up to in one day and how much we can squish in. So if you only have one day in London, here's some ideas on what you can see, what you can do. And yeah, we're excited. It's a really beautiful day outside. I don't know if you can see that. There's blue skies and I feel like that's not very common in London. True, yeah. I don't think that's very London-y, yeah. I know. So we're excited. It's the perfect day, perfect weather. It is 7.40. So we're gonna head out and we're gonna try and find a typical English breakfast. This is the fit. Let's go. We stayed at the President's Hotel, which placed us in an incredible location, brimming with possibilities. Seeking sustenance, we made our way to the Charming Brewer and Co Cafe, conveniently located nearby. Eager to immerse ourselves in the British tea drinking tradition, we both opted for a comforting cup of tea. I also got a warm bowl of porridge while Brayden indulged in the quintessential English breakfast, complete with all its savory delights. So this was part of the English breakfast that Brayden got, and it's black pudding and apparently it's made with pig's blood and like oats and stuff and Now that I know it's pig's blood, I feel like I can taste the blood. Although I wasn't quite the fan of black pudding, this breakfast experience at Burn Co left us satisfied and ready to embrace the wonders of England. Because we only have one day here, we're gonna do a hop on hop off bus. So we're walking to the bus stop right now. We chose the big bus company for our hop on hop off adventure. Booking through our hotel granted us a discount, making it an enticing choice. A 24 hour ticket from their website typically costs around 40 euros. Upon boarding the bus, we were provided with headphones to immerse ourselves in the engaging pre-recorded commentary tour. Plugging them in, we embarked on a journey through London streets where the audio guide skillfully blended education and entertainment. With each anecdote and fact, we found ourselves thoroughly amused and enlightened, making our experience with the big bus all that more memorable. I would definitely recommend the big bus if you're looking at a hop on hop off bus to tour around London. This monument is a reminder of the grim tale of the Great Fire of London in 1666. The fire began on September in a bakery on Pudding Lane and lasted for three dreadful days. The fire destroyed a significant portion of London, including 87 churches, 13,200 houses and numerous other buildings. Although its devastating effects, the fire helped to bring about the end of the bubonic plague as it destroyed the unsanitary and overcrowded areas where the disease thrived. The Great Fire of London remains a significant event in the city's history, shaping its architecture, urban planning and fire safety measures for centuries to come. So we got off stop 16 and we tried to get some shots on the Tower Bridge but it was packed and we found this secluded area right here where we've been taking photos. I'll insert a shot here, but it's so cool because there's like hardly anyone here and we got some dope photos and it's like in the middle of the day as well. After capturing some stunning photos, we embarked on a delightful stroll from Tower Bridge towards Tower Pier. The pathway offered breathtaking views as we walked past the Tower of London, a historical castle which houses the crown jewels of the United Kingdom. If you have some extra time at the Tower Bridge, be sure to explore the hidden exhibition called the Victorian Engine Rooms and and don't miss the captivating glass walkway connecting the two towers. We're just at the tower pier and we're gonna catch a boat ride. See this yellow line? It goes all the way down here until Winchester Pier, it looks like. And we're gonna go explore here in Buckingham Palace and we couldn't resist seizing the opportunity to embark on the guided sightseeing cruise along the River Thames, which was included in the big bus day tours. The guided sightseeing cruise allowed us to see London from a different perspective, offering a unique blend of relaxation, education and awe-inspiring views. Spanish ladies, farewell and 
and adieu to you ladies of Spain for we've received orders to sail for old England but we hope in a short time to see you again. The boat cruise dropped us off at Westminster Pier where we were able to catch our first glimpse of the famous landmark known as Big Ben. Big Ben was actually so incredible to see in person because I didn't realize how grand and beautiful it was. The official name of this clock tower is the Elizabeth Tower. It stands at a height of 96 meters or 315 feet and it offers breathtaking views of the surrounding area from its observation deck. We then made our way to the opposite side of the River Thames because I'd seen that there's a really good viewing point of the Big Ben and some great photo opportunity areas. So we made our way over there and let me tell you the photo ops were awesome. So if you're coming to London this is a great spot to come take some photos, bring a little picnic and sit and just enjoy the nice view. We found this COVID wall and it has all these love hearts along it with names of people who have passed away because of COVID. How crazy is that? It's huge as well. It goes along all this riverbank. We then started to get really hungry, so we made our way to lunch, but of course we had to stop by Westminster Abbey along the way. Westminster Abbey is actually a World Heritage Site and has been the Coronation Church since 10,066. It has hosted numerous royal weddings, funerals and other significant events in the British history. We've just come to this place called the Pret and um, we've literally seen them all over London and they're always packed. So we're like, we need to come and try this place. I'll show you what we got. We got a tuna melt toasty. We got a Swedish meatball hot wrap. We got this ham baguette. And we also got this mango drink, mango passion fruit and lime. After a delicious lunch, we made our way to the hop on hop off bus stop. Along the way, we sighted the iconic telephone booths that you see all over London. And we, of course, had to have a little photo shoot. Once we got on the bus, we made our way to Buckingham Palace. So we just got to Buckingham Palace. You can see it behind me, but everything's closed off and there's like policemen everywhere. So I think that there's something happening in the palace today. Like a bunch of old people over there in like fancy dress. So yeah. who knows what's going on. We're going to jump back on the hop on hop off bus and see some more sights. The bus took us through a little smidge of Hyde Park. I would have loved to really come here and got off and walked around and stuff, but we just didn't have time. The whole neighborhoods surrounding Hyde Park were so cute. Like they're exactly how I would have envisioned the iconic London cute little streets. I'm just obsessed with that type of architecture. We also drove past the Ritz, which is apparently really famous for high tea. So if you're after a high tea here in London, apparently that's the place to go. We didn't have much time as we had a few more other things we wanted to tick off our list. Our next destination was Regent Street, a must visit place for anyone interested in shopping in London. This renowned street is famous for its upscale shopping scene, featuring a wide array of flagship stores and luxury brands. We specifically came here because we forgot to bring our thermals with us to Europe and our next destination after London is Iceland. So we were desperate to find some thermals. I also bought myself a hat because being outside all day and especially traveling on the big bus, you are sitting on the top. So the sun is always on your head and my head got really hot so I was desperate for a hat I would highly recommend the big bus tour in London for a comprehensive and convenient sightseeing experience. The things that I enjoyed the most was the flexibility to hop on and hop off at various stops, making it a stress-free transportation option. I loved its informative commentary, panoramic views, and family-friendly atmosphere. I feel like this vlog is all about the big bus tour. I'm not sponsored by it at all. It's just something we decided to do as we thought it was a stress-free way to explore the city's top attractions in a small amount of time. So if you're only in in London for a couple of days I would definitely recommend it. So we got a thick shake aka a milkshake from Macca's because we always love trying McDonald's in different countries. Let's just be real we just need a little pick me up snack. And it tastes different but I like it. Do you agree? Yeah I like it too yeah. We're walking home now we've done over 15,000 steps we're exhausted. Yeah, so we just got back into our room. We ended up having dinner at this place called Mr. Wei's, which is a Chinese cuisine. Probably thinking why I have Chinese in 
London. I don't know, we just felt like it. <laughs> if you are here for only one day, I would recommend going to a traditional pub. That's what we did last night. And we got like fish and chips and we got like, you know, drinks and stuff. Would definitely recommend doing that, but we did it last night. So we were like, let's get Chinese. We found another pub and it had like exact same menu. Yeah. Like, and we're like, okay, we won't eat here. <laughs> and it wasn't even called like the same name or anything, but it just had the same exact menu. So let me know in the comments, is that very common here in London that all pubs have the exact same menu, even though they have different names and they look like they're different restaurants. Do they share like the same, do they license the menu or something maybe? I don't know. Like the maybe. menu even layout was exactly the same. Yeah. Like it was identical, yeah. It's currently 7.30. We are just gonna literally recoup, repack, cause we're heading to Iceland tomorrow. Which we're excited about. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're from England, let me know in the comments what your recommendations are for people if they're visiting. And I'll see you guys in my next video.